Welcome, Unity Valley Stream family. Welcome to our Holy Thursday evening service. We are going to begin our celebration tonight with our call to worship, call it grace. Vivian. It's the light that pierces through you to the darkest hidden place. It knows your deepest secrets, but it never looks away. It's the gentle hand that pulls you from the judgment of the crowd. When you stand before them guilty and you've got no Today's daily word reader is Chandler Gamery. Good evening. Today is Thursday, April 14th, 2022. The word today is grace. Grace makes my every act a prayer. The power of grace enters each moment through my prayerful intention. I can make even ordinary experiences shine with new radiance by making every act a prayer. 
On Monday, Thursday, Jesus shared an experience of grace with his disciples by breaking bread with them, washing their feet, and praying together with them in the garden. Through his focused intention, these simple acts were imbued with a mighty vibration, giving them greater power and making the ordinary extraordinary. Today, I connect with the same indwelling grace, wherein God and I are one. I treat every inter interaction as a divine appointment. Each meeting is an opportunity to bestow my grace upon another. My experiences keep my heart in the divine presence of God. John 15, verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Have a great service. Thank you, Chandler. That was fabulous. On this special evening, we gather together in communion, always connected by spirit, one in Christ. We are all familiar with the evening Jesus spent long ago and with the words he spoke, which we read in Luke 22. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take this and eat it. It is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, gave thanks and said, this is my blood, the blood of the covenant. In reflecting upon Holy Thursday and grace, I am immediately transported to the weeks of my childhood. I was led by maternal, my maternal grandmother and we attended all of the services together. We observed sacred prayer time and enjoyed special traditions and foods for each of the holidays during Holy Week. I can see now that these rituals were really important in ways I didn't envision then and that they held us together as a family in love and in communion. And they continue to be observed through our family traditions today. Holy Thursday always seems special to me because I was easily able to identify with Jesus through the day's activities. Because just like us, he gathered together in communion around a table with his family and his closest friends for a holiday meal, just like us. The Passover Seder, which he was celebrating that night, is one of the most important ritual feasts in the Jewish calendar. It is characterized by special foods, passage reading, songs, traditions, and most importantly, gathering together, just like we do. I've participated in a close friend's Passover Seders. Perhaps many of you have as well. They were celebratory experiences infused with great love and grace. Can you imagine Jesus feasting? Can you imagine Jesus sitting around a table with his friends? In my college days, I was a member of Newman Club on campus. I recall gathering together to reenact, so to speak, the Passover meal at the Last Supper. We even washed one another's feet. It was a great experience that brought to life Jesus's compassionate, giving, and incredibly loving nature. On that day, Jesus spoke these highly enlightened words, and he advised us to remember in grace, so as to sustain us both on our earthly paths and in our spiritual journey. In the foreword written by Michael Beckworth in Mark Anthony's book, The Last Living Words of Jesus, he writes, Jesus wasn't speaking about the body temple, but about his body of wisdom and his teachings. If you hunger after eternal truth, if you eat and drink of it, you embody the teachings of Christ consciousness, and then you feel the vibrations of the Most High. Charles Fillmore also talks of these vibrations in his book, Keep a True Length. Today's Daily Word tells us 
that grace makes our every act a prayer and to treat every interaction as a divine appointment, each meeting as an opportunity to bestow grace upon one another. Just as I asked you to imagine Jesus sitting around a table like us with his family and friends, can you imagine such a world? A world of endless opportunities to express the power and love of God, to appropriate Jesus's body of words and to live them from the Christ. Beckworth also tells us that we have been invited into an agreement with a moment by moment, act by act, prayer by prayer resurrection of our lives. We can all agree that this vividly describes a celebratory meal we can all enjoy in communion. So on this Holy Thursday, let us together affirm this statement, grace makes every act a prayer. Grace makes every act a prayer. And now Vivian will pray for us the hymn, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And I Chains are gone I've been 
that was a that was a beautiful rendition of Amazing Grace. Thank you, Vivine. So now let us take a moment and pray together in communion from our homes, linked together in one mind and one spirit. Jesus told us, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Imagine being with Jesus and hearing his words. Be still and know that I am God and breathe in the healing, nourishing breath of God and feel that presence, feel that energizing energy. Dear God, we remember, we remember especially tonight, we remember Jesus's words, take and eat this bread. This is my body, which has been given for you. Take and drink from this cup, the cup of the New Testament in my blood, which has also been given to you. Dear God, tonight and always, we accept and we appropriate the redeeming message of the Christ alive within. Dear God, we accept and appropriate the truth that grace makes our every act of prayer, that grace keeps our hearts enveloped in the infinite loving presence of God. Dear God, we accept and connect with the indwelling grace where God and we are one in holy communion. And we thank you, God, for this time together and these gifts. And so it is, amen. And now for the hymn, Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit. In his blood, this is my story. This is my song, raising my savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song.
Amen. <laughs> I see a couple amens. Good to see everybody. Thank you, Jean Ann. And thank you, Chandler. Awesome. You know, Chandler's in sixth grade. He's a big man. It's awesome. And thank you, Vaveen, for queuing up our music. Beautiful music tonight. And it's a blessing to be here on Zoom. I'm grateful to see everyone. It's a beautiful evening, although it's dark now, but it's still beautiful. Um, had a little rain, I love it. Planted a few pansies in our meditation garden today, so they need a little rain. And I hope you'll come here on Sunday and see them. But uh, it's really a special day, this Holy Thursday, more day Thursday. And I really love what it means to us as a spiritual community, because it really has a deep message for all of us. Uh, like the Daily Word says, grace makes every act of prayer. So when we live a life of prayer, everything that we do is to the glory of God. When we see the Christ in ourselves and each other, even our coworkers, it's amazing, <laughs> amazing grace. So I invite you to just take time right now to close your eyes and take a breath with me. As we center ourselves in the presence and the power of God, for we know the truth of our being, there's one presence, one power active in our lives, God the good, omnipotent. And that power is active in you and I when we simply say yes to God. And in this awareness, in this feeling of the presence and power within us, let us all together in one voice and one heart recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We just hold this prayerful energy and just envision us holding hands in the church sanctuary. As we often say, wherever you are, church is, because church is a state of consciousness. So we hold each other's hands virtually through this Zoom call. And just hold your hands out and feel that power and presence pulsing through your hands. 
feel that power of God in and through you and as you. And as we stay connected to this power, we know that we know God is and I am. I am all that God is. Unconditional love for myself, for each other. Infinite joy and perfect peace. This is my true nature. One with God, and one with each other in perfect love. And this is what Jesus demonstrated on this Thursday in celebration of Holy Communion, where he realized with all his being that the Father and I are one. So just realize that for yourself right here, right now. The presence and power of Christ Jesus is within us right here and right now. And the Father and I are one. There's nothing for us to do or say. It's just to be that perfect expression of the Christ. Perfect peace and harmony with all that is. We see all those we hold in prayer in our hearts in prayerful communion, and we see them blessed by the grace, the love, the joy, and the peace of God. For we know all those we hold in prayer are whole, perfect, and complete, complete expressions of the Christ, just as they are. For this power and this presence active in our lives, active in our minds and hearts. We give thanks for all that God is. In Jesus' name, we say, amen. And so it is. So it's great to see everyone. And I'm really blessed that uh, you came out on this Thursday evening to join us through the Zoom. And it's uh, a great time for, it's a time for our lesson, a time for truth. So I invite you to open your heart, open your minds and be receptive to the truth of your being. For our lesson this evening is entitled, I am the bread of life. And it's inspired by John chapter six, verse 35, where Jesus said to his disciples, he said, I am the bread of life. Whom, whomever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. And he goes on to say in John chapter 6, verse 51, I am the living bread which came down out of heaven, and if any man eats of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread which I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. You see, Jesus is not talking about physical bread or, or wine. What he's talking about is the spiritual bread and, and embodying that bread and the spirit that flows in and through our soul. The see, the bread of life is the word of life. It's all the words that... Jesus shared a, with us that are absolute truth. You see, because there's a, there's a, there's like a, a difference in the Bible where Jesus, when he was being tempted in the 40 days and nights, he was tempted to, and they said, why don't you turn stone into manna? And Jesus said, it is written that man shall not live on bread alone, but of every word that comes from the mouth of God. Can you feel the difference? Every word that came from the mouth of God, that came from Jesus, was of absolute truth. There was no if, ands, or buts. It was perfect, holy, 
no denying anything that he said. And that's the essence of this evening is to eat of that bread, to eat of the word of God and imbued it as Chandler said, imbue that in your nature and read it until it becomes second nature. It was just a, a couple months ago that I, I shared the story of one of our old time members here um, and how he came to realize that from reading the New Testament over and over again, the word became imbued in his spirit. And it was through reading the New Testament over and over again that he began to understand it and began to live it. And he came to the realization that the New Testament is all about love. What Jesus was saying was all about love. And even in this special evening, he says, for this blood, this is my blood of the covenant. And that's the covenant of love. He gave us only two covenants, to love thy father with all your soul and all your heart and all your strength, and likewise to love each other. And Jesus poured out this covenant, poured out his blood for us so that we may be forgiven of all our error thoughts and that we may come into alignment with the truth of our being. This is what we truly hunger for is an understanding within our, in our being that God is and I am. And you get that through consistent and persistent prayer and meditation on the word of God until it's imbued in your spirit. And then no matter what happens in your life, no matter what the trials and tribulations are, you are imbued with the strength and the spirit of God. There's nothing I shall fear, for I know that I know I am one with God. That's the gift of this special evening that Jesus was conveying to his disciples and he conveyed it to us to do this in remembrance of him so that we can remember our holiness, our divine spirit. As we affirm every Sunday with the last statement we say, I am divine. Do we really believe it and do we live it? He's asking us to do this in remembrance so that we may remember our divinity and live from it and make every act a prayer, a prayerful communion with the God of our being and in communion with each other. This is the blessing of Holy Thursday. This is the blessing of the living bread and the living blood which cleanses our consciousness of all our error thoughts. And Jesus understood that we would he was about to go through one of the biggest challenges in his ministry when he would enter the Garden of Gethsemane. He knew that he would be betrayed. He knew that he would be denied three times, but still he wanted to share his love with his disciples. He said, this is the last time I will share my love with you until we meet again in heaven, in that consciousness of oneness. Can you feel the difference? That's what tonight is all about. Being imbued with the spirit through the bread, through the word of God that we bring into our consciousness and it erases, eliminates all error thoughts. It's that word assimilation. We're assimilating the truth until we become the truth, until we respond from the truth. You know, tonight I, I'd like to share with you a little story that tells us what it's like when we eat of the holy bread, when we imbue the spirit of God within us. 
And this story took place during the Great Depression. It's an incident that happened way back in the Great Depression of 1933. And it's about a man named Donnelly. And he had spent half an hour resolving to speak to the next man who stopped at the door. You see, he had never begged before and begging came hard for him, but we're in the Great Depression and he had no other choice but to beg. And he said, but I might as well get used to it, he reflected grimly. So he looked like the only way for him to do right now was to beg. And a man came to the door fumbling for a key. He'd be a rich man because he belonged to an exclusive club and he had a key to enter into the side door. And the woman who had gone out of the car was waiting for him at the bottom of the steps. And Donnelly came close to the man and he muttered in a shameful voice, could you stake me to a price of a meal, sir? I've not eaten all day. Sorry, fellow, but I've no change with me, the man replied crisply. Donnelly shrank back and hung over the rail with his back turned until they could go, until they would go. I didn't bring the right key, the man said to his companion. We must go to the other door. What did he want, the woman asked, nodding towards Donnelly as they turned to the street. A price of a meal, he said he was hungry. Oh, Larry, we can't go in and eat a meal we don't need and leave a man hungry out there? There's one of them begging on every corner now. Likely he wants the money for booze. Anyway, I have nothing less than $10 and I don't see myself handling that bum $10. He looks hungry. I couldn't eat for thinking of him. You know what the Christ says to the unrighteous in the day of judgment, I was hungry and you did not give me to eat. I don't want him to say that unto me. I'll have to give, I'll have to give food to the Christ. Wait a minute and I'll give him something from my purse. So Donnelly with his back turned in shame could hear it all and an electric shock passed through him. She was talking about Christ just as his mother used to do back home. His mother read that very same verse to him once, once more, and he could almost hear her voice saying it now. He was supposed to vaguely, he was supposed vaguely that the rich didn't think about the Christ, didn't need him with all the other things they had. But here was this woman, a beautiful and gentle, dressed in luxurious clothes, talking about the Christ as if he was a real person to be met any moment. So she touched his arm and he turned around and she was standing before him, looking upon his face. Here is a dollar, buy yourself some food and don't lose courage. Even if things look hard, there's a job somewhere for you, somewhere out there for you. I hope you will find it soon. He could only stammer pitifully. Thank you, lady, thanks. I'm sure to buy food, not booze. You've given me a fresh start, lady, and I'll never forget your kindness. You'll be eating Christ bread, pass it on, she said, and smiled at him in a friendly fashion as if he were a man, not a bum. Then she was gone to join her escort who waited at the steps. She left a faint breath of sweetness behind. Donnelly started out towards the region of cheap eating houses. His head was up. A good meal would enable him to try again. He could get a meal for 50 cents. There would be half of his dollar left for food tomorrow. He would be eating Christ bread these, day, these two days. Again, that feeling of an electric shock passed over him, 
Christ bread. Well, look here. One could not save up Christ bread for just oneself. An old man was shuffling along just ahead of him, and John Donnelly had seen him before at two places where he had asked for work. Poor old chap. It was hard times and hard lines looking for work when one got of that age. Maybe the old duffer was hungry too. Christ's bread must be shared. So suddenly Donnelly felt a great uplifting of the heart. He too could give. A dollar was enough to buy for both of them. Tomorrow, well, Christ is never short of bread. So Donnelly felt an amazing sureness about him. He said, hey, buddy, what do you say to going in and getting, uh, getting us a good meal? The old man turned, his watery eyes blinking up at Donnelly. You wouldn't fool me, he quivered, but he couldn't believe it until he was seated at an oil cloth covered table with a bowl of hot stew before him. And Donnelly ordered it grandly. They ate with concentration. Presently, Donnelly noticed that the old man was wrapping up his buttered bread in a paper napkin. Donnelly said, saving that for tomorrow, hey? He said, no, there's a kid down here, the old man. There's a kid down here, old man on a, on a drunk. Nice kid, had, to, had some tough luck. And he was crying a little bit when I passed him, hungry. And I'm giving him the bread. Christ's bread, Donnelly, was shaken by the mystic presence, a third guest at the oiled cloth covered table. Let's bother, let's both take him our bread. We've got plenty without it. So I wrapped up my pie too. And they wrapped the food up and they carried it out with them. And the old man led them the way to where the boy stood with a few papers that he was trying to sell. Here, kid, eat this, said the old man proudly. And the boy began to eat greedily. Then he stopped and he called a dog that hung back in the alley, a frightened, a lost dog, as one could see at a glance. Here, Jack, you can have half, he said. Christ bread, ah, yes, it would go to the four-footed brother too. The kid stood up gamely now, and he began to cry his papers, and he sold three while they watched him. Goodbye, said Donnelly to the old man. There's a job for you somewhere, and you'll find it soon. Just hang on. You know, his voice sank into a whisper. This, what we've eaten, is the Christ bread. A lady told me so when she gave me the dollar. We're just naturally bound to have good luck. Yes, sir, agreed the old man. I've got a few new places where maybe they need a night watchman. I wouldn't ask for much pay. It would be a warm place to stay though I'd earn enough to buy, buy my eats. Yes, sir, we're just naturally bound to have good luck. So Donnelly parted with his, his pensioners and he went on his way. And he too had thoughts of a new place to ask for a job. He was turned down, but somehow he didn't hurt so much this time as he was going out the man said, come back next week. Maybe things will open up a little by that time. And as he turned away from the shop, he noticed that the lost, lost dog was following him. Did you know I furnished the grub to the old fellow? I haven't got any more, but don't worry. We'll have some tomorrow, he said to the dog. And in fondling the dog, he felt a narrow strap around its neck and he found a license tag and an address. Oh, you're in luck, he said to the dog. Someone wants you. Guess you'll eat tomorrow. 
all, all is right. Come along, I'll take you home. And it was a long walk uptown, but after a while, the dog was barking madly at a door, which was opened by a starch disapproving maid. Come in, she said coldly to Donnelly. The master will see you. He told me to bring in the person who brought the dog home. A keen-eyed man, while caressing the leaping dog, looked Donnelly over. Why did you bring him home, Donnelly? Has Why did you bring him home? Donnelly hesitated. He could hardly say to this stranger that he had to do it because he had eaten the Christ bread. He followed me down the street in the marketplace. I stopped to pat him and I found the tag. And like the dog, and I like dogs, and I wanted to bring him back to his folks. The keen-eyed man had meant to say sharply, didn't you steal him for the sake of the reward? But he didn't say it. There was something, something of dignity about Donnelly that day. And instead the man found him say, saying, you know, I advertised le in last night's paper, $10 reward. Well, I didn't know that. I didn't see the paper. I wasn't here for the reward. I can see that. I'm glad it came to you. Thanks and good luck to you. And Don look, Donnelly looked at his hand and there was the bill, and he looked at it, half dazed. I don't like to take it. I just want to do what was good for the dog. Take it along. What you did is worth more than what I gave you. And do you want a job? Come to my office tomorrow, and maybe I may have something for you to do. So Donnelly was walking down the avenue with a clutched bill in his hand, and it was a miracle. He had been down and out, hopeless, but there was the Christ bread. It had been multiplied like the loaves and the fishes that he had read about in the country school on Sunday. Once again, he had eaten it. One didn't need to be afraid of going hungry anymore. There was enough of that bread for all. And here was the courage and a job and a new chance and always something to pass along to the others who were also hungry. Oh, something more than the bread that one could see happened that evening. The world could not be beat for the man had been eaten for the man had eaten holy bread, the Christ bread. You see, that's what our evening, this evening is all about. We're eating of the Christ bread. We're eating of the spirit of God, the word of God. And we imbued it in our being and our faith is renewed and restored just as it was for Christ, Jesus Christ on that evening where he demonstrated to the disciples that we are here to be imbued with the love of God and to be in service to each other and to share that love, the Christ bread, the spiritual food with each other in every word, every feeling and every act that we share each and every day not to share in the gossipy and frivolous and petulant words, but to share in the truth, the wisdom, the love, the wholeness, and the peace of God. This is what this evening is all about, is to imbue the spirit of God within us and to live from that. For the bread is the life of God, and in that life, our spirit will live eternally. So I ask you in your homes this evening, I, I hope hopefully each of us have some bread and we can reenact the last supper. But think of the spiritual principles behind this, behind the words, 
we're not just eating bread, but we're eating the spirit, the truth, the love of God, and we're imbuing it into our whole being. So we read in Luke chapter 22, verses 15 through 20, Jesus tells his disciples, I have eagerly desired to eat this Pass Passover meal before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until I find fulfillment in the kingdom of God. So after taking the cup, he gave thanks and he said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from this fruit, from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. So he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, this is my body given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took a cup saying, this is the cup. It is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Take this and drink of the cup. The new, the new covenant being the love of God and the love of each other. And we pour out that love eagerly to each other. For as we go through this world, when we look at our, our troubles, our, our tribulations, do we see trials and tribulations? Or do we see opportunities to be the love of the Christ? Today is a day for us to affirm and to make a commitment to be that Christ, to be the love of God in expression in this world. And that way we will bring the love of God into its full expression in and through and as us. For we have eaten of the bread of life and we will live forever in the spirit of the Christ, and so it is, amen. Break thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me, as thou didst break the loaves beside.
song and I think it says it all. I hope you get a feeling of what this evening is all about. Taking the word and assimilating it into your consciousness so that everything that comes out of you is the love, the joy, and the peace of God. You are the Christ and the Christ lives in you. Can I get an amen? Amen. Ah, that was a great song. Thank you, Vivine, and thank you, David. David picked all our music this evening. Thank you, David. So it comes, uh, it's time to close out the service. And as I say, our service is never over because we're always in service. If you are the Christ, just like Jesus, he was always in service. So we have so many opportunities to serve and we're grateful that we can serve. So we close out this song with the, close out this service with the peace song followed by the prayer of protection. Let us affirm the truth of our being. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. 
I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. And the presence of God watches over us, for I am presence. For wherever we are, God is, and all is well, for I am divine. And as we unmute everyone, let us remember to stay hungry. Stay hungry for the divine truth of your being and to live it in your everyday experience. Have a blessed evening and we'll see you tomorrow for pick up your crosses. <laughs> God bless.